Hello Top Patters, this is Simon Mas. In the previous two episodes of this mini-series, we talked about the basic perks and limitations of copyright. Now the question, how do you get your work copyrighted? You need to fulfill two conditions. One, you must have created the work in a tangible form. Since music is intangible, you must have written a score or a lead sheet of your composition or recorded it onto a digital or analogic support for reproduction. If you have composed a symphony in your head or whistled it once to the wind, I'm sorry, that's not copyrightable. 2. Your work must be original and display enough creativity to constitute something new. You can imagine this condition can be hard to establish. This is by design. The law is meant to be loose so that real people in a court of law can spend other people's money to decide if someone raises a question on the matter. <laughs> I'm joking. It sounds mad, but it's like democracy. Not perfect, but far better than any other system we have imagined. And better than any algorithm. Okay, your song is 100% original and written out or recorded. What now? That's it. You are automatically awarded a copyright on the work you have completed the very moment you have completed it. No fuff, no bureaucracy, no fees! I hate to rain on your parade, but you got to hold your horses. Having watched the first two episodes, you should know what's coming. That's right. You need to check with your lawyers about the specifics of your country's law. Most importantly, here's a scenario for you. Daisy writes a song, I love my mum. She's awarded the copyright on it. Daisy puts the score in a safe box and never opens it again. Years down the line, Daisy discovers Bob has written a song called I love my dad. It sounds very close to I love my mum, and it's number one on the radio. Daisy sues Bob for copyright infringement. A judge decides the two songs are identical. Then he asks Daisy, can you show me any proof you wrote I love my mom first? What is Daisy to do? Bringing some proof she never opened the safe since that day? The moral of this story is that having a copyright might not be enough per se. You need a univocal way to prove what you wrote and when. That's one of the reasons that makes registering your work worth your while. How can you do that? The US Copyright Office is very happy to preserve a copy of your work for a one-time fee. You can use it wherever you are. Or you can use one of the many DIY methods. Release the music immediately. Send yourself a closed envelope with the music and keep it closed until you need to. Or whatever. One DIY method that seems pretty promising is a recent technological advancement. Minting your music in an NFT. Let's not go over the details here. It suffices to say that with NFTs you can prove possession of a digital file at a certain date. Once minted, the file can't be altered, so as long as you store the file online, you have all you need to defend your copyright. Perhaps I should create a video with all the advantages of NFTs for musicians? You tell me with a comment. You copyrighted your song. Then you find a guy has put it in a video on YouTube. Or he's selling it under his own name. Or he's pirating it. Whatever. What do you do to enforce your copyright? You can talk with this guy. Send him a polite message explaining the situation and ask to get things sorted. Or you can contact your lawyers and let them do their magic. Or maybe there's something else specific to your situation. But how do you find out your copyright is being infringed upon? Perhaps right now someone is selling a CD with your music in a Mongolian village. Or you two are covering your song without giving you your due. Unfortunately, you either feel a disturbance in the force or you can't find out. 
you need to use an external service. Sorry, that's probably not what you wanted to hear, but I know of no DIY method. If you do, please share it with a comment and be the hero of the day. So, you need a distributor, a publisher, a record label or some other kind of service. You need someone who, among other things, has the tools to scan at least the biggest social media and online platforms. Our time is up, so I won't name names. Google your specific needs and you will find plenty of solutions. Join me for the next episode of this overview and keep your top hat on. Bye bye. Simon Mas, music you love.